Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a great pleasure uh, to be here, especially in the year of uh, uh, when we're celebrating 100 years of Anglo of Czech um, American relations. Uh, first of all, uh, it should be noted that the communists never succeeded in constructed in Czech collective memory a single negative image of the United States and therefore in the communist era there were essentially two differing and perhaps contradictory images of the United States in Czech society. An official negative one and positive one shared by let's say ordinary people and active dissidents. The negative communist image was largely based on the Soviet class-based interpretation of bipolar world, exploiting adroitly, at the same time, a nation's stereotypical fears of great nations. By contrast, the positive image of the United States was built on persistent historical memory and was used very much in unequal struggle of democratic opposition against the regime. The principal upholders of the contradictory images did not differ just in their political preferences and standpoints and their ensuing social status in a totalitarian system, but also very much in their generation membership. From the methodological perspective, um, over time, it is also important to emphasize the variable nature of the communist communist regime. The United States played an instrumental role in the establishment of Czechoslovakia 1918. The tradition of beginning of Czechoslovak-American partnership was represented poorly in Czech historical memory of communist period. This may have its roots causes even in the interwar period when the role of friends was more or even much more emphasized. The initial communist narrative concerning uh, the participation of the United States in Second World War did not uh, initially significantly reflect the differences between social science research and direct propaganda. And in famous publication by historians Karl Pichlik and Karl Bartoszek, Americans in Western Bohemia, 1945, published 1951, respectively 1953, describes Patton's Third Army, the liberator of West Bohemian town of Pozeň, as occupiers whose task it was, I quote, by order of their Wall Street masters to disrupt the political and economic life in Czechoslovak Republic, end of quotation. According to the authors, the Americans brought with them the so-called American way of life, a cult of cruelty and hate for people, end of quotation, and sheltered Nazi war criminals. And the picture, you can, you can, above you can see a uh, Soviet soldier welcomed by, uh, by by the guy with, with flowers, and lower the American bad guy shooting innocent girl, you know. Uh, as the authors were first to admit, the Americans also found in Czechoslovakia enthusiastic supporters. In the words of the authors, I quote, traitors to the people in the, in the homeland, end of quotation. The book is supplementing with this anti-American caricatures by Lev Haas. Although the regime insisted until 1989 on the thesis about decisive share of Soviet Union in the war victory, and the role of the United States was played down to an absolute minimum, as time went by, the Czech readers could learn more. For example, 1980s so publication of a series of popular books by Miloš Hubáček about the war in Pacific, which met with enthusiastic response from reading community. And people could watch in cinemas, in addition to celebratory Soviet epics about Red Army battles, the film or movies about, for instance, Pearl Harbor, Tora Tora Tora, 
or rather satirical catch-22. Despite uh, the communist propaganda, the Americans share in the victory in the Second World War became a rich source of positive images of the United States. A typical upholder of this tradition was, for instance, the so-called the, was the camping movement, so-called tramps, a subculture whose roots went back to the interwar period. Its members, originally from the lower and later from even also middle classes, drew inspiration from Ernest Thompson Seton's Woodcraft and the idealized romantic and mythical American Wild West. In their appearances, the members of this community frequently resorted to elements referring to the uh, U.S. Army, it means Army Division insignia, military backpacks, for instance, this guy have it, uh, and so on. The typical music genre of this subculture, it means tramp subculture, consisted of Czech versions of American country and songs, whose authors often use souvenirs of American troops. One of the most popular was Czech version of the songs The Three Bells, best known in Brown's version. Uh, the Czech version is titled The Statue of Liberty. Uh, yeah, melody sounds like, yeah, a byl si Johnny Američan, a to něco znamená, hral si Japonce od kanálu, teď nadešla chvíle tvá. Uh, uh, and many other songs, for instance, Quadel Canal, and so on. The second half of 60s brought about a partial transient liberalization of regime. The liberalization did not have merely a political and ideological character, as it also affected the standard of living. It was shown that the effort to create a so-called new socialist citizen had failed, and the citizens of Czechoslovakia ordinary citizens as well as communist officials, coveted the material gains of Western world. Starting 57, such goods began to sell for foreign currencies in selected state stores, so-called Chusex. Coca-Cola began to be produced from 1968 in Czechoslovakia under, under license, one of the symbols of West and its lifestyle. I quote, the West begins where Coca-Cola is sold, end of quotation. Noted during his tour of Western Europe, one of the architects of Prague Spring, the socialist, socialist, socialist Radoslav Zaludsky. The Czech expression for jeans, rifle or Texaski, betrays its American origin. Texaski became in Czechoslovakia the symbol of generation revolt. Lovers in jeans, lovers in Texaski, is the title of the central song in the cult Czechoslovak musical Love Harvest in Summer, made 1964. At that time, the Czechoslovak public was getting into much closer direct contract, uh, co uh, contact with American culture. For example, during two visits of Ellen Ginsberg to Prague, 1956, uh, sorry, sorry, 1965, uh, which culminated with his election as the student Kral Mayales, King of the May. Following a provocation of the secret police, the poet was deported from Czechoslovakia and the communist press mounted a slanderous campaign against him. Ginsberg was portrayed as corrupting the minds of socialist youth as being promiscuous and taking anti-regime stances. At the, time, at the same time, Western popular music began to be imported into Czechoslovakia through various channels, radio stations, The Voice of America, Radio Free Europe, and others, as well as private imports of vinyl records, including American productions from relatively conformist authors to non-conformist subversive composers and interprets in diverse genres, Janis Joplin, Velvet Underground and Low Reed, Mothers of Invention and Frank Zappa, Bob Dylan, John Bias, a singer who supported persecuted plastic people of universe 1976, and in 1988, during her appearance in Bratislava, supported Václav Havel. Jazz music was also uh, very popular. The, 
the propaganda made use of a wealth of uh, the communist propaganda made use of a wealth of older uh, stereotypes regarding the United States that had already been used by central powers during First World War and depicting the United States as decadent land, a warm morning Mr. Money Man, which for his own profits and drops in poverty and wars, the domestic population as well as whole foreign nations, a state longing for world domination. Uh, yeah, uh, on the... On the picture, you can see uh, uh, drawings from uh, uh, school books uh, depicting um, bad Americans dropping uh, American beetle, you know, Colorado beetle, to destroy our fields, you know. Uh, uh, in schools, English lesson, lessons use American left-leaning poets, such, for instance, Langston, Langston Hughes, very often. It often happened uh, uh, that an author whose works were characterized by communist uh, uh, critics as indictments of the American system were perceived completely differently by a younger generation. A case in point is the body, for instance, of work of Jack Kerouac, whose protagonist we did not view as victims of the American social system, <laughs> But above all, as people for whom freedom was high on the scale of human values. Similarly, when the communist press critics depicted uh, the famous movie The Platoon as testimony about the inhumanity of the US Army, yeah, we did grasp uh, the anti war message of film. But on the other hand, the film heroes remained still for us, the American boys. Even years later, the results of regime's propaganda offensive did not amount to much. In the second half of the 60s, the communist allied was embarrassed and alarmed by an opinion poll conducted 65 and 68 among conscripts in the communist Czechoslovak army. A large percentage of the respondents believed that the blame for international tensions lay with both power blocks and only 51 of the respondents described the imperialistic circus as culprits. The posters found that, I quote, illusions about the peacefulness of the US military police are perpetuated not only among the youngsters, but in a relatively high percentage of all the respondents. End of quotations. Only 45 of the respondents thought that the Vietnam War was sparked by policies of the imperialistic state and the United States. Also remarkable was dramatic difference in perception of the United States and Federal Republic of Germany, documented by an opinion poll conducted 65, where communist propaganda could not rely on the real history of a negative experience transformed into a historical memory. It means Nazi occupation 39, 54, 45. The communist propaganda was relatively unsuccessful. Attempts to portray the United States as aggressive, aggressive state. The question of parallelism and correlation of the late 60s generation rebellion in Western Europe and the United States of America with a similar protest of young generation in Czechoslovakia has been subject of many interesting studies. Also, late 70s and 80s, uh, we find many similarities with American youth movement, hippie culture, sympathy for the peace movement, anti-system protest, non-conformity, music cultures and subcultures. However, the Czechoslovak generation protest was often less leftist, with an intuitive admiration for American democracy, much less critical of American politics, at times sympathetic towards American military activities of that time, pro-American nonconformity as a sign of distance from communist regime could paradoxically be perceived in the United States as very conformist, if not manifestation. Uh, my, on the picture, you, you can see my, uh, my or our uh, gradu grammar school graduation photo uh, with central slogan, Zappa, uh, 
uh, from the year 1970, uh, 1978. Uh, specifically, uh, this was manifested in the outward appearance of the younger generation as a remarkable mix of as long-haired fashion and jackets reminiscence of the legendary American model field jacket, 65 Parker. Parker. A popular song, and not only uh, in, in Tramping Maria, was a uh, composition about, um, uh, about um, um, Guantanamo celebrating military base in Cuba. And uh, there was also a Czech version, for, for instance, Czech version of, of, of this song of um, um, American Marines, uh, the halls of Montezuma. Okay. Um, during the 70s and 80s, the US government uh, was in frequent contact, uh, though its embassy with representatives of Czechoslovak opposition, in particular with representatives of the opposition movement Charter 77, uh, and uh, endeavoring to convey an image of the United States that was truer uh, than one that communist anti-American propaganda sought to convey. Uh, by the way, that there was also possible during the 80s to, to borrow, for instance, some, some music uh, at, at, at the embassy. Uh, uh, let me conclude by summarizing the boss, uh, uh, the basic images of the United States of America were built on partially on the older lawyers of historical memory. By using negative stereotypes to create a negative image of the United States, the communist propaganda was less successful that in the case, for instance, of General Republic of uh, Federal Republic of Germany, and throughout the communist rule, it never succeeded in completely overlaying the image of the United States as superpower, defending and upholding democratic principles in the past and at the time of Cold War. The specific material conditions of the communist system and persistent conflict between the dissidents plus the widest population and communist power have led to an understandable, understandable simplification of the image of American reality. In some population segments, the overwhelming fetishism of the outward material and consumer aspects of American dream was a detriment to a deeper understanding of the essence of American democracy. Elsewhere, it was perhaps an overly exclusive perspective on the American underground. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, allow me a little personal confession by way of conclusion. I belong to a generation for which the United States of America has meant and still means a lot. Thus, it was only when we could freely celebrate May 1990, uh, after 42 years, the anniversary of the liberation of Pusan, did I really believe that the Iron Curtain is gone. Let's do everything we can to make sure no one succeeds in restoring it, either from outside or within ourselves. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>